As a board game fan, and as somebody who loves deck builders, I often can't resist sampling the occasional roguelike deck building video game. This time I tried Across the Obelisk, developed by Dreamsight Games and published by Paradox. In Across the Obelisk, four characters travel across multiple maps where they will have random encounters, meet possible new additions to the party, receive clues about treasure or other goodies, and upgrade their cards. Both the heroes and the villains in this game operate using decks of cards with various specialties. Your own party will include pretty standard character classes, with members of your party clearly calibrated to fulfill the roles of tank, rogue, wizard, and cleric. There are several different areas to traverse during your journey. All of the footage for this video is from the starter area, uh, but that's just because there's a lot more out there for you to explore, and I wanted you to get to discover it yourself. This leads to an interesting combination between familiarity and freshness. As you choose different paths from game to game, you'll see a lot of familiar faces. Certain bosses and events always seem to happen in certain locations. But the idea is to use this to your advantage because you know where the rewards are and you know what responses you'll get to the choices you're prompted to make along the way. Different characters might get a chance to behave differently at the same locations, and clues given to you by a stranger on the road might lead to them becoming a member of your party. There are also skill tests based on cards drawn from your deck that will lead to different results during each run, so you actually may want to build your deck differently if you want to cause certain things to happen. And you're definitely going to get to know this world well. Across the Obelisk is a game that will kill you repeatedly, and uh, you need to keep trying to see real progress. As you play, your characters will level up and you can assign skill points to boost their stats outside of what's in their decks. You'll also gain two types of resources, shards and gold, that you can use to purchase equipment, thin out your deck, and upgrade or craft cards. One of the game's interesting quirks is that when you start a new game, you have access to a starter pile of resources that are based on what you earned on your previous run. So as you play, you'll start each new game with more and better advantages going into the new run. There are also some interesting choices when it comes to deck building. When you're upgrading, you need to decide if you're going to choose upgrades that make your cards cheaper or upgrades that make them more powerful. You'll also want to keep a thin deck so that your best cards pop up over and over again. Overall, there's a lot to recommend across the obelisk, and it offers some really interesting variations on the digital deck builder theme. However, this one did not totally hit the spot for me uh, for a few reasons, which I will now detail. The first is that managing four different character decks was a lot. Uh, I'm an experienced solo board game player. I'm used to playing things multi-handed, but it was still a lot, even for me. And it wasn't so much that it was conceptually difficult to remember which cards I wanted to cull or upgrade, uh, as that the process of retweaking all of the decks to my satisfaction each run started to get tedious. Each character has their own window that you have to navigate to, and then each town you stop at has multiple buildings that you have to visit, where once again, you have to look at each character's individual window to assess the state of their deck. It was just a lot. And like spending a lot of time tweaking and doing upkeep is fun for one or two decks. I did not think it was as fun for four decks. So if you intend to play across the obelisk, um, there's a multiplayer option, which might be more fun. And there are ways to save decks, but again, I'm a tweaker from game to game. So I was just not feeling this aspect of the system. Uh, the feeling of tedium also unfortunately extends to other parts of the game. So a lot of battles go on for too long, in my opinion, and I got sick of seeing the first area of the game. Even the cards like stopped feeling particularly exciting. So Across the Obelisk is a game where you're kind of nickel and diming your opponents to death through numerous status effects that just relentlessly stack and stack, turn after turn, in these really repetitive increments. And this is true both in terms of the cards that you play with, you know, bleed, poison, burn, other effects, um, but the enemy cards do it back to you. So sometimes you know somebody's about to die and you just have to sit around waiting for their turn for it to happen. Um, and each character ends up with like a little array of symbols beneath their name to show off all the tiny little deaths of a thousand cuts that they're working up to uh, during gameplay. So the system works, but I just didn't think it was that satisfying. And it just didn't make me feel motivated to keep setting up for another run. Things do go faster as your characters level up. But again, for me, that just kind of adds to the tedium. Like how many times do you have to ground out the same old encounters to make progress hurt less. Um, it just wasn't fun enough for me. Uh, in fairness, there is a challenge mode for the game, which is more random. So it's more roguelike, it offers drafting, it gets right down to business. But I didn't discover this really until I was already sick of the campaign. <laughs> and it's clear that the campaign is where the developers really put the majority of their time and effort. So overall, Across the Obelisk is not a bad game. 
Uh, but it's definitely not for me. It has some good ideas. The campaign has high points. It presents a deck building system that can definitely be optimized for peak performance. So there's a lot of good, but it really rides the line between making satisfying progress and having a miserable slog. And so for me personally, it crosses that line. There are a lot of games in this particular digital deck building niche now, and that means that any one offering really, really has to be addictive for me if it's going to compete with all the other ones. So by dragging some elements of gameplay out too long and like not streamlining them enough, Across the Obelisk doesn't cement itself for me as one of the best in this particular show. But hopefully this video has given you a sense of whether Across the Obelisk is for you, even if it wasn't for me. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back soon to talk about even more games. Please like, subscribe, comment, ask questions, and most of all, happy gaming.